And so I'm Edwin Rutsch, Director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. I want to welcome you to this democracy circle. And we are recording this. And wherever I am, there'll be a breakout room. And that call that room will be recorded. So if, if you don't see me, you're, you're not being uh, recorded. Uh, so next, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Joan, who's going to give our introduction. Take it away, Joan. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to say uh, a few words about how this came about. Um, I've been working politically uh, just because I'm interested in, in supporting um, our, our uh, democracy for many, many years. You know, just helping with campaigns or different projects that were of interest, like healthcare or values. And in the last couple of years, um, I've noticed, um, and it's been rather uncomfortable to see something happening that I had never witnessed in all these years. And that's all the attacks on our democracy, uh, particularly on the foundation of our democracy of, of uh, what a vote is about. And, and trying to control that and to uh, take it away from people and, and to unvalidate. Uh, so um, I, and then the other part of it that uh, came to my attention was we're hearing an awful lot about a very extreme group and even in our Congress of um, Republicans that are trying to do this. But I felt like they're, in our population, there are many, many individuals of all stripes, Republicans, Independents, other parties that maybe we have differences on some issues, but one thing that we do want is to live in a democracy. And, um, and I felt like there's no, nobody actually that I can see that is trying to work on this together to, to unify us with something that's important. And, and all of you that have been around a while, I mean, it wasn't like this uh, years ago. Yes, we had differences between in Congress between Republicans and, and Democrats, but there was friendships. People you know, could communicate with each other. Um, I guess the poster child for that would be Ruth Bader and um, and um, the uh, <laughs> just senior Kalia. What, Kalia. Kalia. Kalia, yeah. Um, they couldn't have been more different, but they were friends. They respected each other. There was integrity in that relationship. So I feel like we have that possibility to bring together the. Democrats, the Republicans, and all the parties, um, and, and work on a commonality, and that is wanting to support our, our democracy. Come together, discuss um, some of the issues, and then really be able to, to uh, pull together and take action. So that's, that's the bit of the background uh, for that. And um, what we're going to do today is uh, we are going to start. Edwin, do you want to do you want to put the uh, agenda up so that I can go over? It? Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with um, how to do a democracy circle, and those of you that are in the group that are familiar with Edwin, uh, he's been using uh, a framework called empathy circles for quite a long time. So this little short video at six minutes will give us the um, basic steps, which are not complicated. It's quite user-friendly. And then we'll be breaking out into small groups. Um, we'll have about 55 minutes. And our topic today is what are your concerns about the present state of democracy? And then we will, um, come together for a 15 minute debrief. And then the last part of this uh, would be to actually see where we wanna go forward. Um, I have planned if everybody is on board and, and wants to do this, um, 
three other sessions, one looking at social media on our democracy, uh, one on the role of education in protecting our democracy. And then the last one would be the nuts and bolts of let's, uh, what are we going to do? What steps do we want to take? And what actions? And actually plan that and get, uh, get together to work together on it. And I left out one thing that I did want to bring out. And that is uh, one challenge is we reached out to all the parties, but um, I was nervous about the fact that this isn't going to work if we're just all one party today, <laughs> um, that we want to have as many Republicans as we can, independents and other parties. So if you don't mind me asking this question, could you raise your hand if you're not a Democrat or you are a Republican or independent or represent another party? I want to see how successful we were. Whoa. one. Per one person, oh, actually, I don't There's see two. That. There's uh, Kyle down below. He just put his thumbs up. In well, I'm an, I'm an independent. I'm not one of them who's antagonistic. Okay. So, okay, this is another challenge that we need to talk about then in our groups today is how can we um, get uh, enough representation from the other parties? A couple of you that are already uh, from another party, if you have connections or ideas or any of you, um, let's see what we can do because this isn't going to work unless we have a group that uh, can uh, come together to unify. Okay, I think uh, I've said my little piece um, and I know we're trying to keep on schedule. So I think we're ready for the video. Yeah, so we're going to be using in these breakout rooms the uh, empathy circle uh, process using empathic listening. So we have a, a short uh, six minute video just that explains uh, how that uh, works, as well as I'm going to uh, put a, a link into the chat here that uh, is also a PDF you can also uh, access and download. So let me just sh share this uh, video and then we'll get into our discussion groups. I'm Edwin Rutch, founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this short presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. So next, let's look at uh, the step-by-step -step how to take part. Uh, an empathy start, circle starts with two to seven participants. Here on the screen, we have four participants, which I find is an ideal number. There are four basic roles, and the roles rotate among the participants as the empathy circle unfolds. One, the speaker, is the first person to speak. Two is an uh, active listener who actively listens to the speaker. There's the silent listeners, they quietly observe and witness. And the facilitator who organizes, schedules, and hosts the circle. Uh, they also do the timekeeping and they have some experience with the process and help keep participants in the process. However, everyone has the responsibility to hold the, the, the process and the practice. So to begin with, the facilitator will start the empathy circle. They welcome the participants. Uh, they uh, lead introductions if the participants don't know each other. The facilitator invites participants to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, and something personal about themselves. Uh, the facilitator then reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone uh, how it works. They announce the discussion topic, if there is one. Even if there is a topic, you can always talk about what is alive for you. That is, what is on your mind in the moment. And five, uh, you can, they set the speaker time limits, perhaps uh, five minutes, for example. And the facilitator then asks who would like to start the, to be the first speaker. So at that point, the participant volunteers to be the first speaker. As speaker, you select who you will 
who will be your active listener and you can select anyone that you want. Uh, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you. And so you'll speak a bit until you have maybe expressed an idea or two, and then you want to pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand uh, that you are saying and feeling. Uh, if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting it. As the active listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they are saying and what is important to them. You are giving them your full attention as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. Uh, when the speaker pauses, uh, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence of that in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, paraphrase, or even say the speaker's words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, and sympathy, or, or even questions, you know, resist the impulse to do so uh, because uh, uh, these common responses block the speaker from moving along their internal journey. You will be able to say whatever you want when it is your turn to be the speaker. If you don't reflect the understanding to the speaker's satisfaction, you, they can always say it again. Then as speaker, you check, do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again, perhaps in different words. Uh, if you do feel understood, continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. As the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you'd like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. Uh, if you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two. After you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying something like, I feel fully heard or something like that to indicate you are done with your speaking turn. At that point, the roles uh, then rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes the new active listener. For everyone having equal time, it is good to select someone that hasn't spoken lately, but it is your choice. The others in the circle become the silent listeners. This process of turn, taking turns in speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. And this was uh, just a very short introduction. The best way to learn the practice is taking mm -hmm. part and doing it. Uh, there is more in-depth material on taking part in an empathy circle and facilitating one at empathycircle.com. Thank you for listening. Okay, so that was just a quick introduction. The best way to learn the practice is just to do it. And we do have, uh, I think, uh, six rooms that we created. And uh, there'll be a facilitator in each one. So the first room, which will be the root, root uh, will stay here, will be Linda, and I'll be here with you. And then the second one will be Larry facilitating. Third one is, uh, is Anne. Uh, fourth one is Ralph. Fifth one is Melissa. And the sixth one is Kathy. And so we're going to have uh, 55 minutes in the room. And let me put the uh, discussion topic into the room. Should we copy that? Oops, let me copy and paste that in. So our topic, and uh, everyone, and our topic is what are your concerns about the present state of democracy? And you'll have four minute turns and the facilitator will be the first person to listen. Someone will speak to them and then uh, we'll take it uh, from there. And I'll give a 10 minute heads up before we close. So you'll kind of know, you know, kind of to, you'll be wrapping up uh, soon. So uh, see you in those rooms and hope you have uh, great uh, discussions. Here we well, go. Just a question, how, okay. uh, how five minute? 
Four minute? Four minute. It's in it's a four minute turn. So gonna be a little bit shorter. Short. Kind of a shorter time here. So we're gonna have shorter turns. So are excellent. You, are, Thank you. Are you gonna put us in rooms or do we select the room? Uh, we're I'm putting you into the rooms and it's about to uh, happen right now. You're gonna get now. beamed up. You're gonna get beamed up. <laughs> Beam me into my <laughs> democracy circle. See you there. All right. Deidre, 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 Deidre. Is it Deirdre. 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 the name that always Deirdre. challenges you, you? You know, the other day I was that night I was saying your name, Deirdre. Oh Deirdre. I was driving. Goodness. I was like Deirdre, 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 like like the deer, Deirdre. Exactly. <laughs> Edwin. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Linda's facilitating. Oh. Okay. Um, so this is our group? This yes. is our group. Oh, okay. Just okay, and, and Cal, welcome. Uh, if you can show your face, we would be so appreciative. Um, we're gonna go around the room. Oh, there you are. Don't you, I'm glad we didn't miss your face and now you can unmute. <laughs> we're gonna go around the room and just do a quick introduction, name and where you're from. Um, and I'll start and then we'll just start with the, um, by be, me being the listener. So I'm Linda Bass. I'm from Keller, Texas. Edwin Rutsch from San Francisco Bay Area. Deirdre Araujo from San Francisco Bay Area. Um, Kyle Math. Oh, go ahead, oh, Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, Kyle Math is from, uh, from Rio Oso, California. <laughs> Um, Joan Kens from El Cerrito, California. I just have one question. Kyle, are you driving? I'm not, I am trying, I have to run errands today. So I, I am, I do not mean to be rude. <laughs> That's okay. Just be uh, safe. Okay. I'll be safe. I'm sorry. I don't, I, I, I don't mean to, to not That's make okay. eye contact. Sorry. We know you got it under control. Just, just be safe though, while you're driving. I always worry about I, people driving and talking. I do. I, I, I'm gonna. If it's okay with you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn off the video again, just so I'll, I can keep my hands on the wheel. But I. Okay. I, uh, okay. I, whatever. Whatever okay. works. All <laughs> right. Thank, I, you. Thank, thank you, Linda. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be four minutes for each person to speak. When you see this, that means your four minutes is up. And Cal, if you're not visible at the time, I'll just let you know when you're speaking, or I'll, I'll let you know when your four minutes. Are, uh, when the four minutes are up, you do not have to stop in mid sentence. I want you, even though I'm holding this up, I want you to complete your thought. If you're the speaker, the completion will be when the listener reflects what you've said. Okay, so just, you know, and I'll hold it That's up good. here. So I'm going to start the circle by modeling the behavior. So I'm going to be the first listener, and I will pick uh, Edwin to be the speaker. And that's how we do it. So once I finish listening, reflecting, he's the speaker, then he, the speaker becomes the listener and they pick someone. Okay, well then I'll speak to you and I guess I have four minutes. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this uh, topic of the democracy circle because I, I'd been thinking about this for a while and then Joan said she really wanted to do this, was had a lot of uh, motivation for kind of getting this started. So I'm kind of excited because Joan's my partner. So you're, okay. you're getting to meet my partner. Okay. So Joan is, Edwin, you've introduced Joan as your partner. This is something that you wanted for a while. And now that it's coming to fruition, you're really excited. And I'm going to give you the lowdown. Kyle is my brother-in-law. So this is, <laughs> this is the, and he's a Republican. So we're glad he's here. And this is sort of like all in the family. So I'm glad you're facilitating this. And, and Linda is a mediator. So we got a mediator <laughs> in <Yes>. the group. <laughs> all right. So, and Cal, you, uh, I mean, uh, Cal, Edwin, uh, you've introduced Cal as your brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he is a Republican. Yeah, and, and this you've is introduced all in the... me. It's my my job as a mediator, but I'm not working now. So right. So I'm I'm kind of joking because it's family yes. mediation, yes. right? 
So, if you're joking, okay. Yeah. Because it's all in the family. Exactly. I feel fully heard. Thanks. All right. All right. And that's the other thing. You don't don't feel forced to do a full a full full a full four minutes. Okay. Now Edwin was the speaker, and now he will um, pick someone to listen. You are the listener, so you'll speak. Linda. I always get that flip. Okay. Uh, so I will speak to uh, Deirdre. All right. Uh, I'm excited to be here today as the uh, facilitator in this group. Welcome. I'm glad that you're excited to be here as a facilitator in this group. Shall we pause to welcome Kevin? How how do we? We're going to keep that? this. We will just flow. OK, thank you. Uh, you were asking if we were going to pause to um, to greet Kevin or anyone else that probably drops in. Okay, um, I am confused because I believe that you are the speaker and I'm the active listener. And I feel like we, we just flipped that with, with Kevin's arrival, so I... <laughs> yes, well, I was repeating back to you. Okay, let me stop. I was repeating back to you what you said to try to keep the conversation going. And eventually I'll answer the question, but anybody that pops in, we're gonna get them in the circle. Thank you okay. so much. Okay, um, what was that? Okay, I am. Um, I got introduced to the empathy circle. I, I tell people I fell down a rabbit hole. I was uh, writing a blog about empathy because I'm a mediator and how that works in in my practice. Well, I, I I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I'm uh, understanding that you are. Um, here as the result of a, a journey exploring empathy um, as a mediator. Correct. And I came up on um, Edwin's uh, empathy circle and I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And I'm glad I fell down that rabbit hole. Because <laughs> you have um, definitely benefited from giving Edwin a chance and this was a very productive rabbit hole for you. Yes. And I was especially interested in this, uh, this particular circle because I, uh, I have a uh, passion for politics. Mm, you have a passion for politics. So this is an especially a appealing session today. Yes, I even asked Edwin, I said, do you want me to be a participant or a facilitator? I was ready either way. <laughs> I, I hear you saying that you were wanting to be a part of this, whether you had an active role or if you could be a participant and you are a facilitator. Yes, and our democracy today, in my, in my opinion, is, um, is chaotic, um, confusing, and upside down and backwards. <laughs> I, I hear you saying that our democracy today is confusing and upside down and backwards. Yes, uh, because I, I do believe that we should at least have two parties or two points of view when it comes to governing people. Yeah, I hear you um, saying that you believe that we need to have two parties um, with um, balanced viewpoints or different viewpoints in, my, in order for this to work. Yes, um, it can't all be one way or the other. Somewhere in the middle, we should be able to meet for the good of the public. Yeah, if, if this democracy, as I understand it, is going to work for the public, then we really need to find a way to meet in the middle. It can't be yes. one or the other. And I think right now, again, this is my personal opinion, uh, our greatest threat is uh, vote, the vote. Yeah, and right now, I hear you say that the greatest threat is the vote. Yes. And that your your time is complete. Do yes. you feel her? Very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, 
I'm through speaking. You're the, the listener, so you get to speak. All right. Well, and pick someone. I, I would like to invite Joan to um, be my listener. Thank you very much. I am so glad to be a part of this, and I always arrive filled with trepidation. And then when I understand the structure, I relax into it. So you were really excited, um, but you had a little bit of trepidation about what was going to happen, and now you're just enjoying it. Yes, thank you. And with the topic of democracy, I, I feel that this is going to be a lively conversation on my family Zoom tomorrow. It's a monthly conversation. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so you're uh, planning to have a family conversation about this on Zoom tomorrow. Yes. And in that call, I have um, family members who have been uh, public servants, politicians, and um, many lawyers, and also geographic representation that includes Texas and Florida. And that's been meaningful for conversation. <laughs> so um, I was having a little trouble hearing you, but it sounds like you have quite a cross section in your family of uh, locations and you have lawyers and uh, think politicians as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, what had concerned me most was my cousin's experience representing all of the educators. Um, the, she was the speaker for the union in Florida. She's a law professor. Wow. Um, so one real concern is your cousin who represents the union of educators in Florida. Yes, and um, the belief that having cameras in the classroom would activate students to report on professors who were um, promoting an agenda um, that was not in line with the governors. And one of the requirements, it sounds like, is that the students would actually report their professors for commenting on content that is not supposed to be in the classroom. And she was able to address that um, with intellectual property arguments. But it felt very concerning that we were putting young people in a position of trying to catch out misbehavior that did not feel like a, a democratic model for me. Right, and this just really felt very, very uncomfortable because this is putting the students in a very awkward position to be calling out the educator uh, and it's not, part of our democracy, of our democratic process. And I'm also thinking of um, my mother who has moved to the far, I think it's a um, Southwest corner um, near um, an island. So right on the coast of Texas. And this is a new community for her having moved there. And Thank you very much. Wow, and your mom moved all the way from I don't know where to <laughs> southwest corner of Texas. And this is quite a shift you're showing with your <laughs> expression. Yes, thank you very much. I feel heard. Thank you. Okay, so I'm the speaker. And um, so is, there, is Kyle still there? I am still here, and, okay. and I have Al and Alex. Alex is here too, and he might 
be willing to speak as well. Okay, so um, Kyle, can I speak to you? Sure. Okay. Um, Kyle, I'm very excited that you came today. Um, to be honest, uh, uh, it, uh, Besides the fact that I think you're a, a wonderful person in the family, um, the fact that I don't know Republicans, um, and um, this is really so critical uh, that we have as many Republicans and independents and other parties um, to come together with us. So um, I'm delighted that you showed up. You're 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 excited that I that I showed up, and one of the reasons is because you you um well you think I'm wonderful, <laughs> and and I think you're wonderful, but you think I'm wonderful, and um and um and you know that this this for this dialogue to be to be successful or meaningful, there we have to have as many voices as maybe as many you need you need people you need people from different political backgrounds um, to, to be participating. Absolutely, thank you. Um, and since I am talking to you and I brought this up in the introduction, um, I hope that uh, when you speak, um, that if you have some ideas, um, I tried reaching out to like the Lincoln Project um, and I'm now on their email list, but I gave them a flyer because I thought, okay, they've got to have contact with uh, Republicans, um, but it didn't go very far and you can't get private email addresses. So um, I reached out a little bit to the Republican party. Um, any place that, uh, any group that sounded like they have more GOP involvement. I, I sent a flyer and obviously it didn't work very well. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing um, any, oh, sorry. I'm looking oh, forward. So yes, so yeah. you're, you're, yeah, so you, 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 you were describing some of the efforts you've made. You reached out to the Lincoln Project, you've reached out to um, other either local Republican groups in an effort to try to get more 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 republic more Republicans. Um, it didn't go very far. They're, they didn't. They you know they they um, they can't re reveal or provide emails or anything. So it didn't go very far. Um, and then what what was the last thing you said? Um. I can't, Edwin put the sign up and I realized, oh gosh, I was talking too much. Uh, so I lost it. But um, I, I don't think, I don't think the problem is that there aren't Republicans that are interested. I think there are probably plenty of people out there that feel exactly like uh, I do. Um, it's more the um, hierarchy of trying to get through an organization. Um, it didn't get it didn't get to anybody that could help me. That was the problem. So um, just um, among your friends, even um, if you have friends that you feel this might be appropriate for, please, um, yeah, ask them to join us. And I'm sure you might have some other ideas as well. And so you're 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 also you're 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 um you're you're suggesting that maybe also if I have some Republican friends who I think well you said first you said there probably are it's it's not a lack of interest there probably are a lot of Republicans who would who um who would like to participate in this dialogue um um and that if, and that as if I know of anybody who, who would like to participate, that I should reach out to them. Yes, thank you so much. And I feel fully heard. Was that the uh, yes. signal? Yeah. yeah, that was the signal. I was hoping you would see it because I know he couldn't, Kaya. So uh, I signaled her, Kyle, that her four minutes was up and we'll be back around. So now, Cal, you get to be the um, speaker. And I don't know if you can see us. Uh, but you can pick someone to uh, to listen. 
where oh. yeah I, 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 I'm parked now Linda so I'll, I'll speak to you if that's okay you okay um um because I, I'm sure I'll be you know I talked to Joan and Edwin you know <laughs> um well I'm really excited to be here too and I'm really grateful um to for, for all of you for uh, including me and um and for all of you participating okay you uh chose to speak to me because you talked to Edwin and Joan all the time so uh <laughs> you picked me and you're excited to be here and you're glad that uh, we've uh, invited you into the discussion. And I can't really improve on, on what the rest of you have said. And you, 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 what you're saying is you can't improve on what the rest of us have said. Yes, I mean, everything you, everything you all have said, I, I, I agree with. And um, I guess I would add, um, like Joan said, um, people used to be able, people of, of different, strong, different opinions were able to, to disagree agreeably. And, um, um, but now I, it's just, uh, and, 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 I, and I'm, I talk quite a bit with, with other Republicans or I, I see their, 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 um, what they're writing and i'm just saddened um i'm saddened by um they, they just think it's, it would be just impossible to be friends or or even or, or, or it's just impossible to be friends with someone um of a different point of view and okay. and i might well i'll stop there okay um You, you don't object uh, to anything that's been said so far. Uh, as a Republican, you see what, what's being written and you just, it's, it's hard for you to take in because you remember a time when we could agree to disagree and still be uh, civil. And you have some Republican friends that don't, that don't believe it's possible to be friends with someone in a, from another party. Yeah, they they just they don't seem to they don't seem to act like that. I don't know, um, and uh, and and I've never been very good at at disagreeing agreeably. <laughs> okay, so, so you admit that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You admit no, that that's you've all. had I, I, uh, it's been challenging for you to disagree agreeably, and you really don't know if your friends feel like that about being friends with another. A person from another party, but that's the way they act. That, that yeah, it's sort of they they would probably never admit that, but <laughs> um, that's just my that's the the sense I get. Um, and um, I mean, I shouldn't. I don't know. I I, I it's just um, it's it's more just the. Um, Yeah, just the the level of of um, the the level of rudeness. <laughs> it's just it just saddens me, and um, um, and and also well that's so. And then I, I know my time's almost up, but um, but I I'm sort of I'm sort of I'm I'm kind of hoping this is a this will be a, a good environment to to sort of practice um, if we disagree on things to be able to, to disagree agreeably. Um, again, something I've never been, something I've never been good at. And Okay, you're, um, you're hoping that what we're doing here today will be just a jumping off point uh, for other conversations and for you to engage in other conversations and be able to disagree in an agreeable fashion. That, that is right. I, and I feel fully heard. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I will pick. Um, I, I, I want to go back to Kyle. Are you still parked? I, I'm still parked. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you to listen to me. 
Okay. Okay. I um, understand what you mean about disagreeing and being disagreeable. There is a difference. I um, had a, uh, and I, I'm speaking in the past tense because I, 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 I guess our status, our relationship has status has changed. But when I was um, doing some part-time work after my retirement, I met this lady and we really get along. She was funny. Uh, she was one of our volunteers and we would laugh and talk and we would, you know, go to uh, lunch together. And, you know, if she was having something, you know, out in the public or wanted me to support, I would go to it and we were fine. And I, go ahead. Yeah, so you had a, you, you had a, you had you had a friend, um, a, a coworker. I guess I'm sorry. It sounded like a maybe a coworker, yeah. or a friend, and you, and um, and you, um, you got along really well. You 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 talked, you laughed, you hung out. If she had something that she wanted your su support, um, you would you would um, you'd be present and, and give her the support. Yes. Uh, but when COVID hit, and we were at lunch. And we got to talking about COVID. Uh, that's when I found out her political views. And she was saying that it was a conspiracy and, and that was Bill Gates was making money off of this and she was just naming people. So, so and then, but then when, when COVID hit and um, Discussing COVID, discussing vaccination, you 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 learned um, some of her views were very conspiratorial. Um, um, Bill Gates, you know, individuals like Bill Gates were were actually going to be profiting from this. Um, these were some things you were sort of new things you were learning about this this friend, this your dear friend. Yes, and what surprised me is because she's a mediator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she volunteered at our place. And I was like, I told her, I, this is not logical. What you're saying is not logical. I said, do you know how many people it would have taken to put this conspiracy together? And I, I said, it's not just America, it's the world. <laughs> Nobody can keep that big of a secret. <laughs> right. And so you, you tried to, to, you know, you tried to, to kind of reason with her. This is just not logical there'd be no way the, lo the logistics of such a conspiracy <laughs> are just not it's just not feasible there'd be no way to and there'd be no way to keep it secret nobody that many people could not keep a secret and it it didn't it didn't face her it went right over her head and um then she sent me something about Robert Kennedy or John Kennedy. One of the Kennedys was going to appear at, at uh, one of Trump's rallies. And I was like, well, isn't he dead? And she said, no, that was a conspiracy too. And he's going to show up. And so I sent her an email and said, don't send me anything else political. And her response, it's not political. And that was the end of the relationship. <laughs> We have a lot of work to do in this. <laughs> you have to reflect. <laughs> ah, so, she, um, what, when you told her this, it just didn't phase her, just kind of went over her head. And she um, told you about, I think I might be missing part of this. She told her about a Trump rally where either Robert Kennedy or John Kennedy was going to be, bit, was going to be there. And you said, <laughs> isn't he dead? <laughs> and, and she said, that's a conspiracy too. He's going to be there. And you said that maybe should be the end of our, but don't, in, you said, don't include in, don't include me in any more political emails. And that was the end of your, um, the end of your relationship. Yes. I feel fully hurt. And I have, um, yeah, I feel fully. I had to say that to her because we never talked, but that, and then I knew we weren't on, yeah. So anyway, thank you. I do feel fully, fully heard, Cal. <laughs> it okay. does sound funny now that I say it, but anyway. So now, Cal, you get to pick someone to um, to listen to you. Well, you know what I, um, um, I, I well, let me see. Um, 
well, maybe I'll talk to um, um, the. Let me see if I can find her name real quick here. Deirdre. Sorry, yeah, Deirdre. Just trying to meet and and Edwin and Joan. I love you too. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay, Kyle. I'm Deirdre. I'm listening. Hello, Deirdre. Well, I have had uh, the exact same the exact same experience as as Linda and um, with, with multiple people and um, and um, what was I going to say? Um, it, and it's 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 very surreal and it's very upsetting. <laughs> I hear you saying that that Linda's story is not unfamiliar to you. That you have had the same surreal encounters. And with people that are whose opinions are mean the world to me, um, um, you know, people who I would trust and who I do continue to trust completely um the um yeah again it's, it's it's with people who are not um they're, they're they're people who are very reasonable very well read very educated and um but we're in two different realities so i'm hearing you say that you're having these conversations with people that in every other context you're feeling like they're you know grounded they are well read they're thoughtful and yet you have these conversations yes and um and um not, 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 and these are people with very very you know that i've had you know that i've known for 20 years or more and so what i've had to do is to simply just say like 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 linda i've had to say we're, we we just i don't think we should talk about this <laughs> um and just say just emphasize i choose you i choose you you know as my friend um um but um but we i just can't I mean, I'll, I'll listen to their points of view, but I don't, I, I can't discuss things with them because I'll just, I'll go, I'll just explode with fury <laughs> if I do. <laughs> I, I, you are honoring 20 plus years of relationships with these people when you say, I choose you. But these conversations are maddening. You're trying. Yes, and, and, and I don't know if my silence is good or not good. Um, yeah, I don't know if my silence is good or not good. Um, again, it would be nice to be able to disagree agreeably, but again, that's not something I'm good at. <laughs> You have said that you are not good at disagreeing agreeably, and yet you're questioning your silence if that is, in fact, a productive or unproductive approach to these encounters. That's right. And I, I guess I could, I can, I can stop there. I, I feel fully heard, Deirdre. Oh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for sharing that with me. Okay, Deirdre. I'd, I'd like to invite Edwin to participate. I'm sure mm -hmm. that you have appreciated some of the downtime since you're always in charge. <laughs> yeah, you? you like to speak to me and you're thinking, oh, I'm playing appreciate the, the quiet, the downtimes. I had so much to do here. <laughs> <laughs> I am reflecting on what I've heard today and I am reminded working in a science center of my earnest query on my, my work list serf for a thoughtful response to someone with QAnon questions. 
Hmm. So you're looking for like how to thoughtfully respond to people with QAnon type questions. And the response I got was, have you been hacked? Oh, so people, you're kind of asking that and then people are wondering if you've been hacked is for just even asking that question. And what my experience is, is that this willful suspension of, of, um, of belief around sort of facts as you can experience them, tangible things, uh, it's very similar to a dedication to a political ideology. Mm -hmm. So the, the approach towards uh, the QAnon so is, is similar to sort of an attachment or dedication to a certain uh, political ideology. You just kind of believe it and there's a similarity to the dynamics. Yeah. And I also am a member of the Lincoln Project and have given them money because I didn't see anything coming out that would counter the narratives that were being put forward um, in the last couple of years. Mm, so you were supporting the Lincoln Project. It sounds like you didn't see anything counter narratives coming from the Republicans. So you want to support that, them. Uh, and at the same time, I, I feel like um, the, the, the messiness of democracy and, and the Democrats, the way they hold themselves accountable with the either self-flagellation or, um, you know, hounding folks out of office um, for transgressions is so messy compared to a more lockstep, straightforward approach to carrying through an ideology. Mm -hmm. So you see the uh, Democrats, there's more of a self-flagellation and sort of a sort of an approach to kicking people out of office uh, in, in for some kind of transition versus just a very direct lockstep sort of approach, the, com kind of comparing those two approaches. Um, and, and for some reason, it's making me think of, I believe it was Rip Torn who rode the bomb down <laughs> in Dr. Strangelove. It's like, you know, how you just give up and, and learn to love the bomb. <laughs> so it's like, uh, the, yeah, in the, how, how you learn to love the bomb, the film, you know, the one guy is writing, writing the bomb down because you just kind of give up. You just love the total blow everything up. Yeah. It sounds very nihilistic and a little bit cynical. And I have so much hope and joy in me that I'm sure a good conversation could help share that. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. So you, you actually still, it sounds cynical, but you still have hope and you think a good conversation could solve sort of problems. And that was the time. So actually, I'm going to speak back to you. Um, so, in terms of solving the problems, I do see that what we're doing with the empathy circle is maybe, you know, the only way really forward. I mean, at a deep level, you know, sides can go back and forth, you know, the left wins for a while, then the right wins for a while. And it's one revolution after the other, kind of like a banana republic. But underneath, the, we're really not learning like the empathic dialogue, how to really hear each other. And that's what's sort of important and the foundation to democracy, what we're doing here. I, I hear that you are seeing the empathy circles as a, a, a necessary path forward when historically we have vacillated between one ideology or another and we haven't practiced the essential skill of engagement and active listening.
Yeah, so politics growing up, you know, in the school was, hey, here's the sort of civics lessons. It's a very sort of structure, see these structures, this is how it works, versus learning interpersonal relating. And if we, if we had to learn sort of this interpersonal relating from the get-go, and it was totally, you know, embedded or it lived in each person, I think it'd be a, you know, it, it's really, it would be, be, we'd be in a different situation. So that to me is what's, what's needed is that learning these skills, you know, from the earliest age. I'm hearing you say that rote learning about civics is not the, the answer, that it, the embodiment of the principles through practice is how people will start to hear each other and I think also hold space. Exactly. Yeah, that was beautifully reflected. And then it's this, so this is what we're doing here is really the way forward. It's to get the, you know, create a movement where people can hear each other. We don't, we're not saying what they have to think or what they have to do, but there has to be a space where people hear each other uh, and understand each other. And from that, you know, solutions can grow. Yeah, you're not saying that people need to be told what to think, but I hear you saying that they need to learn how to be in relationship with each other and to have experiences evolve from that, that it, it is a, a practice. I feel fully heard, thank you. Ooh, who went away? <laughs> Kyle's okay. cell phone battery probably went. Okay. Or, or his son needed the phone or something. <laughs> All right. Two unassigned Okay. Oh, and when you see that, two unassigned participants. Oh. Okay. Um, we're the unassigned. We're, oh, we're all oh, okay. unassigned. We're in, a, we're in the sort of weight room here. Okay. Um, Deirdre? Yes. Am I choosing someone? Yeah, to I, 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 I have to do a sidebar. My daughter is in university in Berlin and has chosen this moment to text me about <laughs> her finances. <laughs> okay. And I'm good. <laughs> I am feeling like. Oh, who, last, who do you, who do you I, want to listen? You know what? Um, I have invited um, Edwin and Joan. Linda, would you listen to me? Sure, sure. Thank you very much. The last uh, two years have been um, incredibly painful and important um, learning, sort of waves of learning. The last two years have been um important in, in terms of learning the waves of learning and uncovering um practices and and thought processes and sort of well-worn grooves in my behavior and my thinking that had not been examined maybe ever Okay, some patterns in your thinking that have not been examined, some old ways of thinking, some uh, patterns and uh, thought, thought patterns or whatever <laughs> have, um, I'm sorry, um, yeah. that have not been examined yeah. previously. And so um, the gift of COVID and the gift of being locked up with myself is that I have had the opportunity to learn and I have been a voracious student. Okay, so you you identify um, COVID as a gift because it gave you an opportunity to be by yourself and to uh, just indulge in learning. Just thank you. And I'd like to clarify that I am the proverbial little girl with the shovel saying there must be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> you are uh, you describe yourself as the proverbial girl with the with the shovel. You're just gonna keep digging because you know it's a pony down. 
<laughs> oh, but I am fragrant. And so I, in my unlearning, I feel that I am finally in a place where I can let someone be fully themselves in front of me. Okay, now that you've, you are unlearning, you've also found that you can let people be whoever they want to be in front of you without any stress. It's comfortable. And this is the place where I get that workout. Those are the muscles I need to keep using. And those are the muscles that you need to keep using. You're using uh, analogies as that's a muscle like working out. Exactly. Well, you use it, the, okay, the stronger it gets. I got you. And when I make mistakes, when I've misread mm -hmm. or misinterpreted or misspoken, I want to hold space for my own grace because that is so much harder than holding it for someone else. Okay. So you've discovered that when you make a mistake or misspeak or misinterpret it, you, you're, you're, you'll have learned to hold the space for your own grace. Yes. That's cool. It's not easy. It's not easy <laughs> to hold the space for your grace. Yeah. And I feel fully heard. All right. Thank you. Okay, we have about 15 seconds. I'm going to be closing the rooms. So okay. That's up. Because I could keep going. You know, I could keep going. <laughs> yeah, we only did an hour and a half for this uh, circle. Maybe the next one we'll do two hours. And it went so quickly. Very, yeah. It would be great to have an independent or Republican or, you know. I've, I've always been independent and I registered Democrat for um, the election. Um, but when I moved back to the U.S. from Italy, I registered um, as independent and was mm -hmm. horrified to find out what that had turned into. <laughs> like, oh my God. And well, so I in Texas, that you, calls. you have to declare one or the other to vote. Right. And you can't, you know, you can't flip back and forth doing that particular election. But Ross Perot changed the nature of independent for me. <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a character. They named a science center after him. They named a what? I'm sorry. A science center. Oh, so, oh center. Yes. I just presented with a staff member from there. So you're a scientist. I was. I left the bench. Now I work in a science center. Hello, Leslie. I, I accidentally uh, left my breakout room. They're following you. <laughs> right, yeah, everybody's coming in. So, Hello, so it wasn't I, an accident. It was not an accident. No. So, well, welcome. Welcome back, everyone. You're probably just wanting to keep talking. We had so much more to uh, say, but this is a little bit shorter circle. Usually we like to go for two hours. This one's just an hour and a half. So I'm going to turn it over to Larry, who's going to uh, do a lead us in a in a bit of a debrief here and I put the question into the chat too so take it away Larry all right Edwin thank you so now each of us can take about 30 seconds to to share any insights or learnings from from our circle today and um, I'm going to expand my screen and try to go around the screen and um, Edwin, do we want to start with participants? Is that accurate? Oh, we can do everyone. Okay, we can do everyone. Great. So I'm going to start on the top left of the screen. Kathy, you're the one. Would you share your oh, yeah. insights from today? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it was very comforting just to hear everybody's perspective. And, you know, I shared much of the sentiments, especially the last share. So just felt comforting for some reason. Thank you, Kathy. 
And Jerry Leventer, would you share your insights and learnings from the circle today? Oh, yes. Hello. I experienced the active listening and found uh, found it somewhat unfamiliar, but it's a it's a good technique. Um, to some extent, I sometimes like to go further into discussion, and that seems a little bit prohibitive with this um, methodology. That's about it. Thank you, Jerry. And Linda, would you share? Um, I enjoyed it, uh, even as a facilitator where I have to keep time. Um, I look forward to you know, doing this again, either as a facilitator or a participant. And I think I could benefit or the circle could benefit from a little diversity in terms of political views. Um, we did have a, a Republican for a while. Um, and, it, you know, and I knew this, but to hear it, it, it was comforting to know that all Republicans don't think like those that tend to be in the forefront today. Thank you, Linda. And Leslie, would you share? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I enjoyed today, and I I enjoyed the depth of of our dis, our sharing in my breakout room. And um, what did I say? Um, oh, just uh, my, my one of my takeaways is that we keep saying Democrat Republican, but. Um, some of my friends that voted for Trump don't call themselves Republicans. They, I don't know what they call themselves, but, um, um, and um, they have told me over and over again, it's not a Democrat or Republican, it's not about that. So I just wanted to throw that in. Thank you. Um, thanks. And Francis, would you share please? Yes, I enjoyed this new experience. It's very good learning experience. I also can observe that many of us in the big old session have the opportunity to share their perspective and we all learn from it. But I'm more interested to find out how this organization will bring to the end that we becoming a functional you know, democracy again, and away from the polarizing political polarization, whether it's by party or Trump or non-Trump or anti-Trump, um, we need to go back to business. We have a lot of competition worldwide and a lot of problems to solve. Uh, yeah. That is what I'm interested in, this kind of circle, how at the end, bring to real changes at the very top and for the whole country. Thank you, Francis. And Melissa, would you share, please? Yes, thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, I sensed a lot of fear and uncertainty and uh, it concerns me because being hopeless and afraid is not the solution. You know, um, it was quite rushed and like Edwin said, it would have been wonderful if we had more time, longer time because a lot of individuals had a lot of things to say. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And Joan, would you share, please? Sure. Uh, John? Uh, Joan. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if I heard it right. Um, I kind of uh, feel just like Francis does. Um, I, I really enjoyed having uh, a, my uh, brother-in-law uh, because I, that's what I wanted to talk about was okay. Um, we do have issues, uh, but I don't wanna spend my time trying to talk to somebody that has conspiracies. That, that's not what I feel this is about. It's about trying to talk to other party individuals, as Linda was saying, that we can just come together and we'll have strength to be able to move forward and to do something because uh, we didn't even talk about the attacks that are happening. The, this is uh, very frightening. And if anybody hasn't read Tyranny, I would totally uh, recommend it. It's a simple little book written um, by a Yale professor 
um, and you can read it in a half hour because this is where we're headed right now. I don't mean to sound gloomy, but that's why I feel like let's do it. Let's get together and not worry about talking to somebody about a conspiracy because you only have so much energy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. And Dwayne, would you share, please? Sure. Um, on, on one level, this is really challenging for me because I, I appreciate, you know, being able to listen to other people's ideas and positions. Um, and then on the other hand, for me, conversation is important. It creates the opportunity for us to connect and find out what we share and perhaps build from there. There's also some larger issues that we're not addressing. It, 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 you know, a lot of people don't even know, we don't know our history. We don't know our, how our political system works and things of this nature. And so those things also have to be addressed. And then there's a simple thing of self-esteem issues and racism and things of that nature. And so I just, I think there's so many areas that it's gonna be important to address. And at the same time, I'm hopeful because we're talking and now we, we, we gotta get together with the people who are not listening right now and do some, have some more conversations. Thank you, Dwayne. And Walter, would you share please? Yeah, I, I want to share a little bit how much I enjoyed the format um, of the active listening. I've done this before, but I, I thought um, I appreciate the facilitator to keep us straight, even me. And I, I think this was a very good exercise. This is one thing. And I noticed that I could actually feel in our little group with everybody. Um, even if I don't share all the experiences, but I have the feeling that we share a lot of the same fears and doubts. And I think the active listening helped me personally also to clarify my questions and my, my own doubts. Thank you, Walter. And Anne, would you share, please? Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, well, obviously anything around politics that quite often people have got quite a lot they want to say. And I noticed that there, uh, contained with that, there is potentially quite a lot of emotion. So I think it, this topic needs space and time and, and it needs us to be able to hear each other. It was very interesting hearing what people brought to the circle and, and the more that we're able to hear those perspectives of each other here, then the better equipped we will be to heal and make things work better. Thank you, Anne. And Greg, would you share, please? I was uh, really, I th thought we have very good circle. Um, and uh, we were uh, unfortunately a little bit of the same mind, more or less. And still, I was surprised at some of the ideas that I had not thought, you know, and, um, you know, kind of surprised at how much variation, even within a pretty like minded group of people, that was uh, very interesting to see. Thank you, Greg. And Gary, would you share, please? Yeah, I found it very interesting that we all have uh, different perspectives, regardless of our cultures and, 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 and our religious beliefs and our political beliefs, that we took time to listen. And it made me think about the, the real issues that are at the core of our, our system, you know, being that everybody has got biased ideals. And I think that's the basis to having systemic racism across the board. Thank you, Gary. And Rick, would you share, please? Yeah, um, I enjoyed the circle. I, it, it occurs to me that, yes, we need a deeper dive to really, a, a bigger commitment to really hear each other fully. And I'm really moved by something that Pan said. He talked about um, 
doing exercises with NBC years back to bring people into the shoes and mindset of George Bush. And my, my, my thinking is that if, if we are now attracting a group who is similar minded, some exercises like that might be helpful so that we could put ourselves into the shoes of a Trump supporter, a, a, a other looking person, a person who sees the world differently. So, mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And Vera, would you share, please? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I loved this session. I mean, this was really nice to be able to get together in a safe space and to share our viewpoints. I think, you know, we here, um, you know, ha have been drawn here because we sort of all have this, you know, affinity towards um, democracy. And I feel like the people who are here, you know, we all generally have very similar viewpoints. And, and so, you know, the people with other viewpoints, um, it would, it would benefit to hear from them, but I feel like um, maybe they're not as uh, open to coming into a safe space like this, to even having those discussions that we want to have. <laughs> so um, th this is awesome. I really love it. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Thank you, Vera. And John, would you share, please? Sure. The most important thing for me is after I thought about our our discussion was dealing with somebody with the opposing views that I might have. And I get the cognitive empathy. You know, I can understand how people think and feel. But when that opposing opinion has un, unrealistic or fantastical ideas about, and you, we've heard them all from A to Z, that just don't exist and are not provable. And people say, well, I've been told, or my husband believes, or my wife says this or that, and there's, there's no basis to their position. From a cognitive perspective, cognitive empathy, I can understand that, but then you try to switch to emotional empathy and that's the challenge that, you know, do you give up on the person and say, man, what you're saying just doesn't exist. And I, I, I respect your opinion, but I can't get further in the discussion to meet to some point of agreement. And it, I could talk a lot, but I'll stop right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. And Maggie, would you share, please? Um, yes, I first want to thank you, Edwin, for starting the group, starting the organization. Um, I think empathy is, is a wonderful thing. Um, I uh, really found it helpful and at the same time challenging because as a coach, I always wanna have people, you know, tell me more when they say something, you know, can you speak a little bit more about that? And, and not being able to do that was a bit challenging. Um, I really resonate with Rick as well um, uh, as uh, Jerry, both of them. Um, and I also am a student of, of, of nonviolent communications. And I think that that and this uh, technology together might have <clears throat> some real staying power. Um, on book recommendations, I just finished a very long book, 14 hours. Uh, called Resistance, and it's just been published, and it's how um, the women were able to bring the country together to be able to get Biden elected. Excellent book. Very, very uplifting right now at this time for me. Thank you, Maggie. And Jana, would you share, please? I appreciate it. Uh... That in a small group, there was a, a lot of um, that we raised a lot of different facets and aspects of concerns, many different kinds of concerns related to democracy. And also, um, I just kind of want to um, elevate the wish for shared truths, you know, that there's so much um, disinformation and distrust uh, now of what is actually. Uh, reliable information and so that we need to, uh, I think that's a shared concern from any us and them is that we need a shared narrative of what is actually, um, you know, what are the real issues that need to be addressed. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jenna. And Susan, would you share, please? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. So from this experience, I really got in touch with my anger and my pain. I realized how much I love democracy. And I realized how much I hate those people and, and that there was nobody there that I could listen to to understand their point of view. So I mean, I don't know what I got out of this except a lot of emotion and very little compassion or understanding. Thank you, Susan. And Pen, Vera, would you share, please? Yes, I enjoyed the process very much. Edwin hadn't seen you in years. It's nice to see what he put together. I really appreciate the process. I found it very heartwarming to hear from people from their own points of view, stressing the importance of kind of group mind and how not everyone has the same thoughts and points of view, but if we share them, then we all become richer and more informed and more empathic. Um, um, I, um, the thing about NVC is that when you share emotionally, you're not sharing about the story. You're sharing about the common feelings and needs that everyone has. And when you do that, the pain, the anger, the disagreements drift away because those feelings and needs are the only thing that we share universally. So, uh, Thanks for letting me be here. I really appreciate it. I'm congratulating myself for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. And Rand Strauss, would you share, please? Um, I'm all about a new analysis, a new vision, and a new solution, which is that a communication platform that secures our banking system, focus on putting us in communication with each other, and our elected officials peacefully on political issues so they can serve us instead of serving the parties and the wealthy donors. I was very heartened that in this forum, suddenly people could hear me. Uh, and I'll put a link in the chat. Thank you, Rand. Uh, Deirdre, Deirdre, I'm sorry for my pronunciation. It, imagine walking um, in my shoes for a while with this name. <laughs> yes, my name is pronounced Deirdre, thank you. I've been thinking about the word demos and I've been thinking about empathy circles and how democracy comes from understanding the humans involved and practicing this with each other and putting ourselves into places where we are the other and still doing this is what's going to make the difference. And I had a joyful experience yesterday of being included in Crip Cafe which is the end of the month noontime California discussion with people with a wide array of identities and, and disabilities and just living in that and being able to be a part of it showed me that there are many, many, many more perspectives out there beyond the political divide that we need to practice listening to. And it goes back to what Dwayne was saying. This, we're getting our training here, but we have to take it out. That's what I'm thinking. Thank you, Jim. And Ralph, would you share, please? Yes, and um, process-wise, I thought our group had uh, uh, another gear or two, uh, at least, left to it. Uh, tremendous uh, uh, range of uh, uh, insights. Uh, many of which uh, would not have occurred to me. I think this is a great idea. I think this is the uh, hors d'oeuvres. Uh, I think there's a few more, few more courses uh, to, to come up with a um, uh, perspective that can uh, lead to some uh, st strategies, actual actions to take. Um, 
And I also come away uh, thinking, um, does anybody even know somebody who voted for the former president? Um, I think that's the, that's, I call it the molecular level. That's where change will happen when we can actually talk to somebody uh, who doesn't uh, agree with us. And I think it's absolutely uh, necessary, as Susan brought up, to lead with uh, compassion um, uh, and, and uh, the, these are, uh, everybody here is a human being just like myself, uh, maybe a, a few things, a uh, few, few things we don't have, few chromosomes or whatever we may not, <laughs> we not share, but uh, this is a human enterprise that's gonna require every different point of view and every different kind of person. Yep. Thank you, Ralph. You're welcome. And thank you. And um, the screens are moving a little bit. Um, Kevin, would you share, please? I guess I, I found it very um, enriching. I definitely think it was it is needed and still needs to go further to know that um, at the end of the day, no matter who's in office, who's pulling the strings, that at the end of the day, as human beings, we still need to come together to push the agenda to make sure quality of life is happening in a way that it moves not only the individual, but politics. It moves the political agenda, no matter if you're Democratic or Republican at the end of the day, like you said earlier, we're human beings. And I think this platform allows for that listening to happening to actually like, that's what you said? Let me repeat that back for you again. Mm -hmm. And is it clear? I think this is a great platform to, to push that forward, you know, and how do we go forward to push it even more further, not just on this topic, but in many more like this, because at the end of the day, it's about human being and change. Thank you, Kevin. And Bill, would you share, please? Uh, yes, thanks. I, 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 a good part of my living is, is doing facilitating and mediating groups and I really felt appreciative of the quality of listening and uh, also um, feel appreciative that this group is coming together like this uh, because, you know, having a like-minded tribe to at least take the step forward uh, to um, uh, uh, have people that we can uh, lean on to hear and be ready for the next uh, change. Um, the safest word uh, to discuss with uh, somebody that is um, in conflict, you know, especially in the political space, is the word fairness. Uh, they have an opinion about fairness. Now, their version of fairness might not be ours, but it is the safest word to discuss with them because they have a lot of complaints in fairness. And then eventually you can move them to collaboration and cooperation, but fairness is where you got to start because they're, they got an edge. And um, I, I've, I've been in the water crisis at Flint and, and if you're not speaking compassion and empathy, when people make junky decisions, um, it's really, really hard to uh, get the listeners and the people to participate. So I just want to let uh, Edwin and Larry and all that put this together, I feel really appreciative of, of what you've done here, just to at least get us all on the, in the same environment, even though uh, we're all bringing our different levels of skill and expertise. I, I really feel appreciative right now. Thank you, Bill. It's Edwin and Joan. We really Joan, put this thank together. you. Yeah. And Sereka, would you share, please? Hi, um, Sereka. I um, enjoyed my time in our breakout session, um, just being able to hear everyone's concerns, but also hear um, a potential solution and just kind of hopeful about the work that Edwin and the other facilitators are doing and the potential to bring empathy circles into a larger space. So thank you. Thank you, Sirica. And Sally, would you share, please? Yeah, um, I was um, really, um, well, it was really apparent um, that a lot of people were in 
a fear-based mode, which I think will not work for our um, for a solution based um, methodology that we all need to be um, confident because um, the empathy circle process is very powerful. And um, I was especially um, just excited um, when I heard about um, peoplecount.org um, and Rand's prog project and that I hope he gets all of Silicon Valley on board with him because there's going to be a, a lot of programmers and um, there's going to have to be a lot of discussions. and. Um, I guess that's kind of where I'm at. Thank you, Sally. And that website that Rand mentioned is peoplecount.org. And now I'll turn it back over to Edwin and Joan. And I hope I didn't miss anyone. I did have a lot of screens to go through. If I missed anyone, please raise your hand or say something so that uh -huh. I can. Is Kyle, are you there? No, he's, he's not. He had dropped out. Oh, okay. I think he was on a cell phone. Jerry, did Jerry go? So I see it earlier. Yeah. Okay, so Thank everybody's you. gone. Great. Uh, so, so if you haven't, you just jump I, I get, in. I can put a plug in for peoplecount.org. I'm actually working with um, Rand. Um, so I have some business and website development, you know, internet skills, marketing. But uh, anyway, but this this project sounds great, and I look forward to to participating again. Okay, great. Well, thanks for that. So for me, I just sort of, sort of my report, I was struck by the common frustrations, you know, the sadness, the struggles, kind of the fractured personal relationships. It seems like it happens, you know, across the, across the board. So everyone's having those, uh, you know, those wounded or fractured uh, relationships. And I do think that this practice, uh, among others, is a good step, a first step for healing those fractures. If we can get together, have a structure where we can hear each other, uh, this can do a lot towards uh, healing and, and mending and, and uh, building a stronger relationships. So I'm really grateful for everyone uh, taking part. We're a few minutes over, but let me just uh, say we, we are planning on holding another one of these on, on the 13th, uh, November 13th. So just a quick hands up, who would be interested in coming if you if the, your schedule permits? And you can bring friends. So your task is to bring someone from the other party to this. So that's your task. You got, you got a something on the to-do list. And I did put in some of the topics we're gonna to be covering, which is a, it, we're gonna maybe do a series of at least three to get rolling. This was a bit of a, an experiment to see how it worked. I thought it was quite successful. And we have other topics like, uh, and I put those into the chat, uh, thoughts about democracy and media, the role of education and democracy, and uh, you know some specific steps that, that we can take. So with that, uh, I wanna thank you all. We'd like to do some uh, jazz hands, sort of a you know group portrait of everyone, if we can get that and just uh, say goodbye for now and look forward to seeing you on the 13th and we'll be sending out more info about that. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. And if some of the facilitators would stay back just for a quick uh, debrief, would appreciate that. Bye, Jerry. Good to see you again, Walter. Bye, Susan. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Duane. Bye, Deidre. Thank you all. Okay, let me just stop the recording. Uh, could you stop the recording? Are you sure?